Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about computer memory. But before this, I would like to recall you about IPO cycle. As we know, a computer works on IPO cycle. That means input, process, output. Let me explain you. First of all, a computer takes input from the user, then the processor processes the data, and then that processed data is known as output or you can also call it information. Now, as we require input devices to give the input to the computer, a processing device that is CPU to process and output devices to display or get the output. But do you know where does the computer hold these day input or output data? Yes, it requires one more device and that's called storage device. A computer uses its memory to store information and those memory devices are known as storage device. Do you know one thing? A computer does not understand any of your language and neither English nor in Hindi or any language it does not understand. So it stores all its information in the form of 0 and 1 and that's called binary digit or it's simply called bits. Each letter or number or symbol has its own unique binary code that is very difficult to understand for you. But thankfully we have some components in the computer to interpret our language to the computer's binary digit. You will come to know about this more in higher classes. Now let's know about different memory sizes. As we have different measuring units for different things, we have some units in computer also to measure the memory. The smallest memory unit is bit. 8 bits make up to 1 byte that is occupied by one character. But as you go for higher memory spaces, the unit changes like 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobytes. Then 1024 kilobytes is equal to 1 megabyte and so on. Now we'll talk about kinds of memory. So a computer has two kinds of memory, number one, primary memory, and number two, secondary memory. If we talk about primary memory, then it is also called internal memory. And it is also the main, main memory of the computer. It is of two types, RAM and ROM. Whereas secondary memory is also known as external memory, and that stores the information or any data permanently. It has also so many types like hard disk, SSD, pen drive, CD, DVD, Blu-ray disk, data card, cloud storage, and so on. Let's know about these devices individually. There are only two primary memory. First RAM. So RAM stands for random access memory. It is a temporary memory and it stores the input, instruction, or output but losses all the information when the computer is turned off. Now what does it mean? Let me give an example. Suppose you are working in MS Paint and drawing something. Suddenly your laptop turns off because of low battery and you have not saved your drawing. After charging your laptop, when you restart your computer and paint program, you find that your drawing is not there. It means your drawing was being saved temporarily in RAM, but as the laptop got turned off, the RAM cleaned all its memory. This is what RAM does. It saved your data temporarily. And that's why nowadays we ask for the phones or laptops with higher RAM memory so that it can run the applications smoothly and do the multitasking. Now, ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. It is a permanent memory but the information once saved cannot be changed. For example, can you change the process of shutting down the computer? No. Why? Because these instructions are saved in ROM. All the instructions that is required for booting up the computer are stored in ROM only. It means the predefined or default commands. Now we'll talk about all the secondary devices. Secondary device stores the information permanently. So when you save your data using save option, 
it gets saved in some secondary device. So our first device is a hard disk drive. In short, we simply call it hard disk or HDD. This hard disk is fixed inside the CPU box. So while working in a program, the CPU uses RAM for processing. And when we save the file, it is copied from RAM to the hard disk. And we can save it on any other secondary device. Now SSD. SSD stands for Solid State Drive. It's a new storage device in the market that is much more faster than the conventional hard disk drive. This has also two types, one internal and second external. And the storage capacity is 128 GB to 2 TB. Do you know one thing? The booting speed increases when you install your operating system in an SSD. So next time when you go to purchase a new laptop, ask for SSD, not, not for hard disk. Yeah, it will be very costlier than hard disk, but yes, your laptop will run very smoothly. Our next secondary storage device is pen drive. This is a small portable storage device that can store your data permanently. With a portable or external storage device, it becomes very easy to carry your data. You can get a pen drive with a storage capacity up to 1 TB. Next we have CD, DVD and VD. Let me explain you by differentiating all these three. CD stands for compact disk. DVD stands for disturber versatile disk. Whereas BD stands for Blu-ray disk. All the three disks store data permanently. All these three are portable so that you can carry your data easily. But their storage capacity differs. A CD can store data up to 700 MB. Whereas DVD can store data of 4.7 GB to 17 GB. Blu-ray disc comes in two types. One single side which has a storage capacity of 25 GB. Whereas two sided disc will store data up to 50 GB. Data card. Data card is also a portable storage device. It is also called smart card or simply called memory card as well. Normally it is used for the devices like cameras, mp3 players, mobile phones, etc. A data card is available with the storage capacity up to 1 TB. Now here is the latest storage technology called cloud storage. It means that your data will be saved in remote servers using the internet rather than saving it in your own computers or laptop storage. Now what is a remote server? Actually there are some companies which provide storage space in their computers by charging some amount. The benefit of cloud storage is that you can access your data anywhere anytime by just logging into your account. Some of the companies which provides these services are Google Drive. Microsoft OneDrive, Apple iCloud, Dropbox, etc.